Why do, you need, right why do you need God to, to be the reason why we do this to make? We don't need it. That's the thing. See, for me, I converted to Islam. I come from a humanist tradition. My dad's like a philosopher, right? I didn't need it. I was happy. I had everything. The, the, for me, it was more of a conviction. You see, the, you have to separate between emotions and intellectual reality. For, it's not an emotional story. For some people, it is. I agree. They have to fill a gap in their lives. But you'd be surprised. A lot of people in the humanists, they're here because humanism fills a gap in their lives. Do you see? Is this book from the divine? That's the discussion. Because if God does exist, if you have good reasons for God, if you did present a book to mankind, well, is it from God in the first place? Let's have that discussion. If it is, then we can start discussing well, what values did he say, what's the correct interpretation, how we're going to solve human problems. I'll give you an example. This is very powerful. See, the problem of Somalia, take the famine of Somalia, it's a disaster. The reason it's a disaster, not because of resources. You know, we have enough calories in this world to feed about 12 billion people in this planet. If you study geopolitical studies, there's enough food on this planet. Why do 10 million people in America die from obesity almost? But in Somalia, they die because of no food. The issue is about distribution. That's the number one economic problem. And Islam gave solutions for this in a humble way. He said, look, you have the zakat system. Take 2.5% of the wealth of people and, and distribute to the poor. Sadaqah, give charity. The removal of interest, because interest is the impediment to the distribution of wealth. Because if you put too much interest, compound interest on an individual, then they have less money in their hands. In their hands. But if they have more money by removing interest, then they have to engage it in society for more entrepreneurship. So it creates a really unique model. Natural resources in the Islamic paradigm belong to the people, not to the government. The Prophet Muhammad said that the natural resources are the people's, not the government. The government has only delegated authority to use that money and give it back to the people. This is why Saudi Arabia is very unjust. Because Saudi Arabia takes the oil for themselves. But their own tradition says, give it back to the people. Minerals belongs to the people. This is our tradition. So, in a contemporary context, Islam has so much to say about economics. So much to say. And, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and the economic values emanating from the Islamic tradition are actually solving, can solve some of these issues. For instance, if you look into the Islamic banking, when the credit crisis happened, the Islamic banks came out the strongest and still they weren't fully Islamic to show the stability of the Islamic system because if you look at money for example in the capitalist model generally money is free floating it's not contingent on gold or silver it's free floating and therefore if you have more money in society it doesn't mean you have more wealth but in the Islamic tradition it has to be contingent on gold or silver or something substantial which actually stabilizes money uh, if you take the Ottoman period even if you take the 15th century in 1453 if you read the book Constantinople by Philip Mansell he write he quotes a letter from a rabbi a rabbi and he writes a letter to his persecuted brethren in Europe saying come to the land of the Muslims come to the land of the Turks we're not oppressed with heavy taxes rich are the fruits of the earth uh, if you even go to Turkey for example and you go to the big beautiful mosques the architecture you go inside there's two huge kind of baskets made out of marble and what that, what ha used to happen they used to fill it with gold so you, your hand used to go very deep and if you were rich you would leave money if you're poor you take it so you don't know if you're taking or, or, or leaving and the majority of the time there's always gold in there it, so it's the first time in history that people had food shelter and clothing because of these economic principles do you see and these are values that i think we can share